60 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. Coming right up, another fun varsity sports show. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. Hey, this is Sophie, and you're listening to my dad, Vince. Dad, you owe me 20 bucks now. Hi, kids. This is DJ Soul Man from the Funk Junkies, and you're listening to the Varsity Sports Show with my man, Vince Delisio. And what's, what's your last name? <laughs> it's it's yeah. Delisio. Okay, that's right. That's yeah, what I thought. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. AM 1060 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. This program is paid for by the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization and its partners. You're listening to the Varsity Sports Show, home of Arizona's youth, high school, college sports, and you, empowering education and enabling dreams, right here on KDUS AM 1060 in Arizona. And now, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. Good morning. What we have in mind is breakfast in bed for 400,000. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. Vince Delisio joined live out at McClintock High School for some youth football championships and, uh, and some other things. We've got a, a, a great show, uh, a lot of activity. Uh, we're extremely busy with, uh, with things going on in and around the community, and today is no different. Uh, I'm joined by a new team member of ours from the uh, Walter Cronkite School of Mass Communications at Arizona State University. Her name is Rona Yosufi. Did I pronounce your last name right, Rona? Yusufi. Okay. Rona, first of all, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. Welcome to our team. Welcome to Arizona. Thank you so much. Well, uh, tell, us, tell our audience a little bit about where you're from. Where did you grow up? Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, this is Rona Yusufi from Afghanistan. I have joined um, Crankite School almost uh, for almost two semesters. And also... Um, Exactly. I'm working uh, in this sports show, and I'm okay. really super interested. Wonderful. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a busy summer for you. You have a lot of activity, a lot of projects that we're going to be working on for you. Um, your your knowledge of sports internationally is pretty extensive. We w One thing that we like to do here at the Varsity Sports Show, we're not just a, a, a mechanism to report sports news we also educate the masses and and when we get into summer and schools are kind of closing dying down in terms of activity within the schools we'll transition we'll pivot a little bit and we'll present some different things throughout the community we'll feature some local nonprofits we'll we'll still talk about sports to a certain degree but we change things a little bit and um, and, and today and, and this summer is no different. And you are joining our team at the right time, Rona, because you're going to focus on some different issues um, throughout the summer, some things that we had spoken about and some areas that you're very passionate about, that you're a champion for. What are some of those areas outside of sports that really interest you? Uh, in this program, I'm really interested to get experience uh, with interviewing people, mm -hmm. uh, talking in the radio and mm -hmm. need to know like how to handle the interview situation sure that's really important for me to get to know because it's going to be really help me for the future uh, for my job future sure yeah and also uh, this sports uh, varsity sports show really really uh, made me uh, happy that I can just need to learn a lot of things the uh, you're you're a champion for women's rights as well 
Yes. Correct. Yes. And 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 so and and you you have um, some 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 contacts, some um, uh, some some people overseas in Afghanistan that you wish to maybe bring on to the show to talk about some different things. Is that are those some areas maybe that that you had been interested in pursuing and talking a little bit about women's rights as well? Yeah. Sure. Perfect. I, I'm gonna work uh, in the in that. Uh, in that part, uh, especially for women's rights in Afghanistan mm -hmm. right now, that unfortunately the situations of women's rights in Afghanistan is completely terrible right now. Yeah. And I really need to focus on that one, and I'm going to talk about that one a lot. Why do you feel it's important that you raise awareness and you educate our audience here at the Varsity Sports Show about other things going on at the, in, the, in the world? What, why do you feel that that is an important thing? Uh, so when I give the correct information about the women's uh, rights situation right now in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. so the, the world we will understand the situation of women in Afghanistan. So definitely the world, especially the world, uh, the nation, um, the, one of the organization which is called um, the World Nation and also the, um, the the other organization will definitely help other uh, the other women in Afghanistan to get their freedom, to get their right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I do not talk about this, uh, definitely the world will not understand the situation of a woman in Afghanistan. Very good point. And, and a lot of times when you, you point out things going on in other parts of the world, it helps us to have a greater understanding so that we don't fall into a similar pattern of doing things that maybe are happening in other parts of the world. Would you agree? Yeah, I do agree. Okay. So with that, um, and we're, we're going to focus on good things too. It's not going to be all negativity. Yes. Yeah, uh, sure. but, but it's interesting news. It's a way to educate and it's a way to, to enlighten people on, on things going on in the world because uh, thanks to the modern marvels of technology, we are closer together the world is just a little bit smaller because of of how we can communicate you have some people in other parts of the world listening this morning who's listening right now and uh, where are they yeah uh, right now i do have my siblings and my also my cousins okay so one of my sisters she is in germany she's gonna listen to us uh, also two of my siblings they're in bangladesh they are the students of AUW over there. Wow. Also, my family who are in Pakistan, they are also listening to us. What, uh, what are their names? Uh, so the one who is in Germany, her mm -hmm. name is Fakhria. Okay. And the one who I'm is... I'm not even going to try pronouncing uh, yeah, that. Yeah, that's so difficult. And the one who is in um, Bangladesh, uh, there are two of them. One of them is Injila. The next one is Basira. Okay. The one who, uh, the one who are in Pakistan, uh, they are uh, my family. Uh, my older sister, her name is Roya. I got my brother, Ramin and Zahra, my, my mom and dad, Laila and Jafar, they're listening to us now. How did you end up at Arizona State? Uh, Arizona State, so usually I, I came in Arizona in December 2021 okay. uh, because the school will be started in 2022. Uh, then I got my first semester, uh, which was I was study, only studying English for two semesters. And then after that, I start um, get I choose my major, which was uh, journalism. Also, uh, my next major is data science. I'm studying a uh, double major. Wow. D a double major. The was it very difficult to learn the English language? Uh, actually, it was not very much because I was an English teacher for eight years in Af Kabul, oh, Afghanistan. OK. Okay. Yeah, and uh, when I just joined uh, English language in America, it was pretty uh, helpful for me because most of my accent was wrong, but it just made me to pronounce the correct words in a correct way. There's a misconception out there that if you don't speak English, you're not very smart. That's not true, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. not true. <laughs> you, you know multiple languages, so, aside, so what, are, what are some of the languages that, that you're fluent in? Uh, mostly Persian, which is also, we say Farsi. Farsi, okay. And also Pashto, okay. which is another language of Afghanistan. Uh, okay. English. Okay. These three languages I'm very familiar with. Okay. And, and are there others where you maybe you know a few words here and there, just enough to get you uh, a, a glass of wine at a bar? I mean, you know, is there just enough, uh, is there enough, <laughs> an, uh, you know, different languages that you know just a little bit of? Yeah, I know Turkey, uh, okay. right. which is called Turkish language. Um, okay. Because I do have my boyfriend over there. Uh, also, uh, he, he teach me some of the new words. Uh, okay. 
okay. which is they say if you say I love you in in Turkish we say sini <laughs> These are okay. the words. What what is how do you how do you say it? What is it? We say sini severum. Sini severum. Sini severum. Okay, that's good. Yeah. All right, uh, and and okay, so wow, so you you know quite a few languages. Uh, in addition to having to master having uh, English mastery now. Again, you taught it for a few years, okay, but now you're here and you're immersed in it every day. Do you notice some things culturally within uh, the American culture that maybe are a little different to you that you've had to learn, that you've struggled to learn? Are there expressions? Are there uh, things that people do here that are a little different from where, where you're from? Yeah, the culture is a little bit different. In Afghanistan, we are forcing our guests to eat a lot. Yes. But we are always telling, like, please eat, please eat. We are asking them in mul Afghanistan, mul you multiple do that. times in okay. Afghanistan. Okay. But in America. Sounds like Italy, too. Yeah. yeah okay. But in America, uh -huh. if you ask, like, one time, if they say no, then you're not, you should not ask anymore. Oh, because then you could offend them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I see. All right, so it's okay to be pushy in Afghanistan, but here we have to back off a little bit because yeah. you never know. You might you might end up in a fight or something. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's 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 different. It's something different to get used to. You And by the way, I give you credit, you ask a lot of questions. Like, you force me to think half the time. I'm like, oh, my gosh, Rona's asking me another question. And, and you write a lot of things down. You're very detailed with your notes. Do you ever lose your notes? Uh, yeah, I do have it. Sure. Okay, but do you ever lose them? Do you ever misplace them? Because you keep very detailed notes. Like, you write everything down. Uh, yeah, sometimes yeah. I do. Like, okay. uh, just miss some of the parts, especially yes. the interview day. I just I repeat one word two times, and that's not good. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I got you. Now, you did a report. Um, we're going to transition to a report you did on the Mayo Family Foundation. Who are they? What are they? Uh, Mayo Family Foundation, which is uh, an organization that is made by two persons. Uh, these are uh, one of them is uh, Vicky, <coughs> which is an Indian lady, but she got her citizenship in the United States. Her husband is Samir. She also got uh, her citizenship in the United States. So the both started this organization in 2019, and they're trying to arrange this organization. The purpose of this organization is to create a good program, uh, a food distribution for homeless people, uh, plus they're uh, working on the women's right, especially in the third countries. And uh, plus they're working for children, uh, the, the children that they are and do not have any family, they're supporting them. So that's really a good organization. And I was a volunteer uh, on Wednesday okay. so that I can uh, help them, the homeless people, to give them food. And I just um, I noticed that that's really a helpful organization. Let's go to that report. And I swear today we're going to be talking a lot of sports as well, but we have a special re a report from our very own Rona Yusufi on the Mayo Family Foundation. Take it away, Aaron. Mayo Family Foundation, founded by Samir and Veiki Mayo in 2019, supports impactful program for children, women, and communities in need through the initiative like the Food Our Food Track Serving Nutritious Meals. The foundation aims to address basic needs like food security and give priority to empowering at the risk children with academic and job. Uh, skills for future success and stability. Additionally, it advocates for women's equality, fighting against violence and discrimination while ensuring access to education and fair wages. So now uh, we're going to talk about uh, Bernadette. She is uh, the executive director of Mayo Family Foundation. Hello, uh, Bernadette. Uh, how is your day going today? It was really good. Thanks for asking, Rona. And then, how many years have you been the executive uh, director of Mayo Family? Yes, um, I've been the executive director for the Mayo Family Foundation uh, since 2019. Oh, sounds good. And there are like three um, other questions that I want to ask you regarding the today's uh, volunteering that we have done it so far, uh, regarding the uh, giving food for homeless people. So the first question is, what is specific um, strategies does the Mayo Family Foundation employ to ensure that uh, nutrition meals are accessible to the homeless population through their food track program? Yeah, we partner 
with local charities. So we don't, we can't mandate the types of meals that are provided. So uh, because we partner with those other charities, um, it's what's available at that time. And so that is how it's decided on what we are distributing. Mm, sounds great. So the next one is, uh, can you describe the impact of Mary Family Foundation food distribution efforts on improving the overall well-being and health outcomes of homeless individuals? Oh, absolutely. So we serve anywhere between 300 and 500 homeless individuals each time we come out. Um, we fulfill a critical need in a gap of food coverage between what the local homeless charities and the homeless shelters provide. So we're kind of that gap fill. Mm, okay, perfect. Uh, thank you so much uh, for answering the questions. Ready to bring KDUS AM 1060 into your home with Alexa? Hi, I'm Alexa. Download the KDUS AM 1060 skill and enable. Then say, Alexa, open the KDUS AM 1060. This is where I start my day. APAC is your one-stop source for all your automotive and heavy-duty air conditioning parts, supplies, and equipment. They're family-owned and have been the Valley's go-to for all your auto AC needs since 1982. Whether it's for your everyday or vintage car, commercial, or off-road vehicle or equipment, APAC has you covered. Call APAC, double A, P A K, the AC experts at 602-254-1116 and ask for the Varsity Special to get 10% off your purchase. Training Better Athletes was founded by renowned football coach Ron Sowers with the philosophy of training well-rounded young people in mind and body. TBA is the go-to for middle schoolers through the pros. Coach Sowers has worked with all sports but specializes in football offensive and defensive line skills training. Whether it's one-on-one -on -one or group training, reach out to Coach Sowers at trainingbetteraffletes.com or call him at 602-435-9064. You can't cheat the grind. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native, born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road, just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Hello everyone, my name is Nicholas Anderson. I'm a sports broadcasting student at the Hanks Greenspun School of Journalism at UNLV. I am stoked to start creating visual and audio segments along with broadcasting and sideline reporting for different games this season. As a writer for the UNLV Scarlet and Gray, I can provide insightful knowledge on a variety of different sports. I am excited to be a part of the team this season and looking forward to kicking off the year right on the Varsity Sports Show. Need social information about KDUS AM 1060? Try KDUS 1060.com at KDUS AM 1060 on Twitter and Facebook.com slash KDUS AM 1060. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. Vince Delisio live from McClintock High School for the Youth Football Championships out here. We'll be joined by uh, Dyron Tappan a little later on in the show. He's the coordinator of uh, all of the events activities at multiple sites uh, today. And uh, we just tried to find a little bit of shade and set up. So we got a nice shade of the big tree. Um, but, yeah. there's a, but there's a lot of uh, bird droppings all you're around right. us. So we're going to have to duck for cover as the show goes <laughs> on. Hey, we keep it real here at the Varsity Sports Show. You, you guys, you know, you tune in. We're going to be completely honest. We're not going to paint a rosy picture just for the sake of painting a rosy picture. <laughs> we're, we're completely transparent. Right, Rona? Yes. Okay. Uh, joined by our new team member, Rona Yusufi, and join on the line. Guys, our, our intern internship is nationwide. We have uh, um, broadcast team members from all over the country that have joined us here from the vars at the Varsity Sports Show. We have six schools represented this summer, and they're all going to be joining us throughout the show. That's one thing I forgot to mention is today is, is a kickoff for all of our new team members that are joining us this summer. They're going to be grinding, working hard, and one such team member is joining us from the University of Wisconsin at Madison, 
uh, our first from Wisconsin, Go Badgers. His name is Mark Berger. Mark, good morning, and welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ben. Thanks for having me. Mark, you uh, are one of the most thorough guys I've ever met. Um, you, you don't shy away from, from uh, asking any questions, which is a great quality to have. Have you always been this inquisitive? Yeah, you know, you know when I was uh, much younger, you know, especially in like my high school days, and maybe like early, early college days before I transferred from Butler University to Indianapolis, I yeah. remember being this type of guy that like would want to ask questions, right? But you know, I was always timid, like, oh, am I asking too many questions, or am I am I I'm nervous? I'm going to ask too dumb of a question. But you know, throughout my years, yeah. especially when I got to math, and what I've learned is, you know, t- t- professors in TAs love questions from students that's something that they love doing is yeah. hearing those questions from students because that just shows you're engaging and that you really are very curious to learn i agree because if if you're asking a question chances are there the there's five to ten other people that are thinking the same thing but afraid to ask so my hat is off to you for for asking those questions because that that tells me that maybe there's things that I didn't uh, explain thoroughly and I need to do a better job. So thank you for that. Thank you for for stepping up in that way. All right, let's get to know you a little bit. Now, the whole purpose of of bringing you on this morning as well as your peers is to get to know each of you. Let's talk about how you ended up at uh, Madison. How did you end up at the University of Wisconsin? So I think just to start from my childhood, I've always been a huge Badger fan. I was born and raised in Milwaukee. Um, I always loved watching the Badgers growing up. I remember in 2015, the Final Four run when I was a little kid. I remember when I, I think I was 13 years old at the time of that run, which I thought was one of the best moments of my childhood. And when I got to college in the fall of 2021, I didn't start at UW. I actually started at Butler University, a small private Big East school in Indianapolis, Indiana, where I originally was studying sports media there. Um, but then, toward my sophomore year, I wanted to be closer to home. I wanted a bigger school-type atmosphere, big city feel, and we got the transfer application in. Fall of my sophomore year, I got in, and here I am. Good. Perfect. So I got another question, Mark. Uh, what are you interested in this program? And could you answer this question, please? Uh, which program are you talking about? Can I mean, the varsity, varsity internship that you got. What are you exactly interested in? Oh, the varsity sports show, yeah. Um, you know, I think just for me, I'm really just interested in engaging with people. I think that whenever I watch a broadcast, right, you, like, you can just tell that these anchors or these people that are reporting, they really engage with you, and that's something that I want to continue to do and just provide very accurate information through broadcasting, play-by-play, or even reporting, which is something that I really want to continue to do. Awesome. Mark Berger from the University of Wisconsin in Madison, new team member with the Varsity Sports Show this summer. Mark, we are excited in all sincerity. I'm I'm thrilled that you joined the team. I think we've got a lot of great things that you're going to be working on this summer, uh, as well as uh, assisting on managing our social media a little bit. You've got a, a real strong background in all of the above, and uh, uh, you're engaging. You're uh, you, you, you're one of the hardest working guys that I've met, uh, and uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, congratulations, welcome to the team, and uh, looking forward to hearing more from you as the weeks go on. Thank you, Vince. Thanks for having me. You have a great day. All right, you too. Okay, uh, Aaron, let's transition. We got a report from our very own Robert Diaz at the University of Florida on Bronny James. Bronny James, the eldest son of NBA superstar LeBron James, was cleared by the NBA's Fitness to Play panel. Bronny was diagnosed with a congenital heart defect last year. This story was first reported by USA Today Sports, who spoke with someone with knowledge of the situation under the condition of anonymity. The NBA draft combine begins Monday in Chicago, and Bronny will be in attendance. James, who played at the University of Southern California during his freshman season in 2023-2024, has entered his name in the draft and put his name in the NCAA's transfer portal. To retain their college eligibility, college players who have entered the draft must withdraw by May 29th. According to Shams Charnia, sources say Bronny James is expected to stay in the 2024 NBA draft. The NBA draft will take place June 27th. In early April, LeBron James said, quote, Bronny's his old man, and he has some tough decisions to make. 
When he's ready to make those decisions, he'll let us all know. But as his family, we're going to support whatever he does, end quote. Bronny sustained a life-threatening sudden cardiac arrest in July when working out on the USC campus. At the time, he was diagnosed with a congenital heart defect and was cleared to return to full basketball activities in late November. Bronny averaged 4.8 points, 2.8 rebounds, and 2.1 assists on 36.6% shooting from the field and 26.7% on three-pointers in 25 games for the USC Trojans. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show. AM 1060 KDUS Arizona live from McClintock High School in Tempe for Youth Football Championships. And uh, we're joined on the line by another one of our amazing team members. This one, we're going back to the West Coast to San Diego State University where we're joined by our very own Mac Pham. Mac, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show, and welcome to uh, to our program. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the show. Mac, we are so excited that you joined us this summer. Um, what what was the the allure of of being a part of the Varsity Sports Show team? Because you're the very first from San Diego State joining us. What drew you to, to Varsity? Hello, Mac. Are you there? We may have lost Mac. Shoot. All right. Well, uh, okay. We'll try to bring him back. So Mac is uh, Mac's joining us from San Diego State, another talented. Uh, uh, Rona, have you ever been to San Diego? I have been there, yes. Do you like it? I love it. it there yeah. are so many beaches, the beautiful beaches. I love it so much over there. We're looking forward to doing a remote broadcast from San Diego this summer. That's one of the reasons why Mac joined us, is to give me a reason to go to. No, no, no. He's very talented, and, and he is the first that's joining us from San Diego State. So how, how he does will be a gauge of, of, uh, of you know how the program will do overall over there and, and if other um, – uh, other students, uh, you know, kind of follow suit, but so there's a lot of pressure on Mac's shoulders, um, and uh, and and he is back. So Mac, you okay? Yes, I'm here. Okay, we lost you for a minute there. So so what was the attraction, the allure of joining the Varsity Sports Show this summer? I think definitely just the the skill set of what I bring to the table aligned with what the Varsity Sports Show is all about and what they and what the show is asking of me to do. That's definitely the, that's definitely the, the thing that I, that definitely most attracted me. And for me as a student at Singer State right now, I currently have a, I'm currently part of the school's college radio program where I have a show talking with two of my friends, two other girls, where we just talk about sports for an hour. So I just thought that the large sports show aligned with my, aligned with my skills, my aspirations. Oh, sounds great. So I want to ask you one more question. Um, how did you end up in your school? And like, I mean, when did you join your school? How did I join the what? Sorry. How did you end up at SDSU? Yeah. Uh, I went to community college once I finished, once I graduated high school. And mm -hmm. I, I, at community college, I, I started as a communications major before switching over as a journalism major. So I did, so I did through the community college school work and then I applied in the San Diego State and a couple of other schools. Um, mm -hmm. and then and and then eventually I got accepted in a couple other schools and, but I just ultimately decided to go to go to San Diego State and now I'm at San Diego State. I'm, I've been there for now it's been two full years and now I have one more semester of school left. Perfect. Thank awesome. you so much. So uh, yeah. thank you so much, Mac, for joining us on the Varsity Sports Show. We're looking forward to a lot of insightful reporting this summer from you. Uh, you've got a lot of talent. And, and I was telling the audience when you, when you uh, had some difficulty, technical difficulty, that there's a lot of pressure on your shoulders because you're the very first from San Diego State. So a lot of students are kind of watching what you're doing before they decide to take the leap and join Varsity. So good luck to you this summer. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I, I don't really see it as pressure, but I see, I see it as more of an expectation. Definitely have high expectations. High expectations. There we go. Mac Pham from SDSU, San Diego State University, joining us this summer on the Varsity Sports Show. R Rona, when we come back, we've got uh, our very own Riley Robertson that will be joining yes. us, as well as the rest of the show. So, guys, stick around here on AM 1060, KDUS Arizona, the Varsity Sports Show. We'll be right back. Go yeah, Varsity. Yeah. You'll be right back.
Your caddy, Ray Adams, takes you beyond the 18th hole on Saturday mornings with Great American Golf from 6 to 7 a.m. on KDUS AM 1060. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. With an experience so good it remains indescribable. With something for every seafood lover. Try one of their amazing custom seafood boils, sandwiches, appetizers, and salads. Angry Crab Shack Tempe is located east of I-10 on Warner Road. 480-674-3847. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. Come ready to eat. Hello, this is local voiceover model and former Daddy Yankee stunt double, Mario Malibu. Be sure to DM us your questions for Ask Lucas on Twitter. And you are listening to the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS, Arizona. Hello, everyone. My name is Robert Diaz. I'm a sports journalism major at the University of Florida. I am very excited to join the Varsity Sports Show. I intend to cover the NBA playoffs, but I'm open to covering any sport. I can't wait to share my expert analysis throughout the semester and hope to deliver a great listening experience. Have you downloaded the KDUS AM 1060 skill for Alexa yet? Food. Alexa is frustrated. No matter how many times do you ask, the answer is mail, chicken. Once you're ready, say Alexa, open KDUS AM 1060 to listen to your favorite shows. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS, Arizona. Rona and Vance from the McClintock High School joining as a new team member from Cronkite, Ri from Cronkite School, Riley Robertson. Good morning, Riley. How are you today? Hi, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Hey, Riley, thanks for joining us. So let's, let's get to know Riley Robertson a little bit. First of all, <laughs> you... Your, your flight got canceled coming back uh, to, uh, to Arizona. Are you back? Yes, I finally made it back yesterday, last okay. night. Um, it, was a, it was a big ordeal. The thunderstorms in Dallas did not like me, but I finally made it back. Perfect. Uh, Riley, could you tell me um, about the school? When did you, when did you start uh, joining Cronkite School? And can yeah, so actually I came to ASU in 2022, and for my first year, I only did sports business. I'm a double major, so I'm doing sports business and sports journalism. I didn't end up adding sports journalism until the second semester of my sophomore year, which I just finished. But yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing sports business at WP Carey and sports journalism at Walter Cronkite School of Journalism. How is that being coordinated? Because you're, I mean, I can understand you know, a dual major with, with a, a little more um, of a relationship under the same umbrella college, but you're in two different colleges. You're on the business school on one side and you're on the journalism school on the other. How did, how did those two coordinate? Yeah, so it's kind of a lot. Um, I honestly probably bit off a little bit more than I can chew, but we're chugging through it. Um, it's, it's a lot. I kind of have to do two completely separate, like, paths of college. I have to like redo all of my prerequisites for journalism so that I can go down that path while I'm still finishing my business degree. But this is the reason why I came to ASU, so I'm very happy to be doing it. Perfect. I have one more question, Riley. What are you interested in varsity program that we have right now? So what are you really interested in this program? Yeah, so I grew up listening to sports radio. I'm from Dallas, so I listened to the ticket all the time growing up. Um, and radio was just always something that interested me, and it was something that I wanted to explore and have a possible career in. So this was exactly right up my alley, and I love talking about sports. It's my favorite thing to talk about. So this was just perfect for me um, and for my future career. Riley, uh, so it... it being from the Dallas area, you know, there's a lot of great journalism schools in Texas. How did you end up 
selecting uh, Cronkite of all the schools? Yeah, so um, it's kind of a funny story. I didn't apply to a single Texas school. Um, I wanted to go outside of Texas. I wanted to be out of state. I kind of wanted to, like, get away from home and experience new things while I still had, like, the security of being able to go back home. Um, and when I was looking at schools, I ended up being between Mizzou, which also has a great journalism school, and Cronkite. Um, but ultimately, Cronkite and, like, the Phoenix area was exactly what I wanted. Um, it's so perfect here, and I couldn't have made a better decision. Awesome. We're excited to have you, and you made a great decision by joining the Varsity Sports Show team this summer. Uh, we're looking forward to, to all of the fine reporting you're going to be doing for us and, uh, and really enlightening our audience uh, to all things Riley Robertson, so it should be a lot of fun. Riley, thanks so much for joining us this morning, and we'll look forward to, to having a, a great summer from you. Yes, thank you so much for having me, Ben. We uh, were joined, um, we were out at uh, Training Better Athletes last, when I say we, I mean me. <laughs> I was out at Training Better Athletes last Saturday uh, where I had a chance, there was a, a very special event, a, a banner unveiling that Coach Ron Sowers does periodically uh, a, a listing schools that his athletes that he trains are headed off to. He, Coach uh, Sowers not only trains you physically, but he, he works with your mind and, and gets athletes to, to really buy into education and takes pride in that. And he's got banners up of all these schools and all these, these kids that he's worked with and what schools they're going to. So it was a lot of fun. Had a chance to listen uh, to, to listen to it and to interview uh, one of his coaches out there who happens to be the head football coach at Central High School. He's former USC uh, football player, Chris Barrett. And uh, we're going to run that conversation that I had with Coach Barrett. Take it away, Aaron. Joined by brand new Central High School Bobcat head football coach and coach at uh, Training Better Athletes. His name is Chris Barrett. Coach Barrett, first of all, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. Um, talk a little bit about your journey and, and how you ended up at Central. Uh, and, and so now being at, at Central and, and traditionally, I'm a Phoenix Union guy. I'm, I grew up through the Phoenix Union. I coached the Phoenix Union schools. So I know that numbers are a little thin. It's hard to recruit because life happens. You've, you, you're dealing with uh, not only a, 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 a different demographic, but a different socioeconomic demographic. What, what has, uh, what's it been like the last few months in terms of uh, the turnout with the kids? So as far as numbers, I'm kind of used to that. Uh, when I was in high school, my my coach only kept about 35, 40 players on the team, and the reason why, he didn't want dead weight on the team. You know, so my whole purpose in going there, I was like, you know what, I'm going to find me 35 guys, and right now I have 35 guys, and every player, we're going to make sure we have the best 11 out there. And um, since February, I've been pushing them to the highest limit. You know, I'm demanding excellence, something I got from Coach Orjohn back in, the, in college and everything, and um, they respond well. You know, every day gets better and better, and our whole goal is to make sure we're 1% better every day. The uh, as as you build a program and and you you have a a, a say I, I know you have an AD but you have a say in what the schedule looks like and what the freedom schedule looks like how do things look for this fall uh, right now our, especially our, our teams be running around our, our defense our defense is really fast very aggressive and everything um, and I understand our schedule is not the strongest schedule out there but you know what when you watch some central you're gonna see 11 discipline players on the field at all times you can see guys hustling to the ball getting the ball out and everything and have actually not actually but just mainly having good character out there on the football field the, the experience here in working with Coach Sowers, how long have you known each other and, and what's been the draw here for you and, and, uh, and how do you feel like you've grown not only as, as a coach in working with some of these kids? Uh, yeah, so I've been with Sowers for about two and a half years now and my passion is giving back. You know, I've, like again, I had amazing coaches coming up and everything that gave back to me and this is my calling. My calling is to give back, you know, and every weekend that I come in here, we spend about six to eight hours a weekend in here, a lot of time and everything, you know, and I love getting better as a coach. So I come in here, I have athletes that 10, from 10 years old to 17 to 18 years old. So it's kind of different every time and everything. But again, I have that patience and I understand the basic fundamentals. And that's what we teach here and make sure these guys are able to go into practice and utilize everything that we taught them. 
Coach Chris Barrett, Central High School, brand new Bobcats head coach. Coach, good luck this season. Thank you so much. Uh, we, it's going to be an exciting year. Excited for all the great things that you're doing here at TBA with Coach Sowers and uh, as well as uh, beyond these walls. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. This is Mark Berger from the University of Wisconsin-Madison reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. The sports in Milwaukee have shown great excitement and some heartbreaks in 2024. Without further ado, let's recap the year so far for Milwaukee sports. The Milwaukee Bucks finished their NBA campaign third in the Eastern Conference, taking home the Central Division crown. This season presented much uncertainty with new head coach Doc Rivers taking over midseason. After adding eight-time All-Star Damian Lillard to the mix, there was much hope for the season at Pfizer Forum in Milwaukee. Heading into the postseason matchup with the Indiana Pacers, Giannis was out with a calf strain, which proved to be costly as the Bucks fell in six games. The Bucks will look to run it back next season with Doc Rivers at the helm. The Milwaukee Brewers were a team with much doubt from the media heading into the season with starting pitcher Brandon Woodruff out for the season and all-star closer Devin Williams out until at least late July. However, so far they have defied the odds. As of the morning of May 14th, the Brewers are holding a half-game first-place division lead in the NL Central over the Chicago Cubs. The Brewers brought in Reese Hoskins from the Philadelphia Phillies following his ACL tear during the 2023 spring training. He leads the team in home runs with nine as he has provided a much needed power boost for the Brewers offense. However, we have seen a, we have seen huge surprises from the bullpen, including Brian Hudson, former LA Dodger, posting a 0.81 ERA in 22 and a third innings pitched in 15 appearances. The Brewers have a major series coming up later this month at American Family Field against their arch rival Chicago Cubs, led by former Brewers manager Craig Council. This is Mark Berger from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and you are listening to KDUSAM 1060 Radio. What an amazing show so far. So, uh, Rona and Vince back at McClintock High School, where we are broadcasting live. Uh, it's obvious we're live. We're sitting here. Uh, and there are some youth football championship games going on at a couple of locations throughout the Valley. We're at one such uh, site where there's a ton of games right now. The 10 and 11s are playing. Uh, and uh, there'll be more throughout the day. We're going to be joined by lead coordinator uh, Dyron Tappen later in the show. Uh, Rona, you'll be interviewing uh, Mr. Sure. Tappen, so that should be a lot of fun. Um, and we've also had a chance to get to know not only yourself as a new team member for this summer, but also the rest of our team. There are eight new team members joining us throughout the summer that have committed to, to working on the production of the Varsity Sports Show, both our Arizona show and our Houston show that runs on Sunday mornings, um, running production and, and putting it together for the summer and really growing as a journalist, as a broadcaster, getting stronger. Have you had fun so far, Rona? Yes. <laughs> that's, not, we, that's not convincing enough. We, we have to work on your excitement. So what do you enjoy about this? Uh, about today's. Oh, yeah, in, in general. You uh, like, do, you, do you like how it's kind of spontaneous, or do you need things scripted a little more? Actually, I love it. I really get so excited about it, and I really enjoy a lot. I okay. get experienced with about today's okay. events. All right, okay. You could be honest. It's just us here. Okay, uh, so um, what, what do we have? Rona, what do we have coming up? next after the break so after the break we got one of our team members who is he his name is doc doug uh, what his name is doc uh santo See, doug santo hey. okay and where is he from he is uh he is from arizona but also he's one of the students of uh, Cronkite school at asu and okay. uh, he's one of the, our team member in varsity sports show you had a chance to work with him the other night at the saguaro showcase event that went very well. It started off. It was a you know a little <laughs> a little uh, touch and go because we were putting some things together and, and getting used to working together. But you really enjoyed talking to him, right? He's a pretty knowledgeable guy, right? Yes, he was. He was super kind, friendly. Yeah, he was amazing guy. Yeah, he's a regular Boy Scout. He was. Uh, he, he really and he he ran more or less did all the commentary from the press box while we were down on the field talking and doing interviews. You really had a chance to to work on that microphone and get in front of that camera the other night too. Yeah. You have fun with it? Yeah, I love it. Oh, man. It was, uh, it was a hot day, too. So, yeah. anyway. All right, guys. When we come back from the break, we have... Who's joining us? Doc Center. And where are we? 
Uh, we're gonna. We're, we are in AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. And what's the name of the show? Uh, Varsity Sports Show. All right, guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We'll do what's best for the team, and we'll do what's best for you. The Rich Eisen Show, coming to you weekdays from 3 to 5 p.m. Here on KDUS AM 1060 and KDUS1060.com. Hello, sports fans. This is Dick Stockton, and you are listening to Arizona's home of youth, high school, college, and you. The Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060, KDUS Arizona. Hey, local businesses, join the Varsity Sports Show and promote your business on our weekly radio show and game live streams. We have several options to promote your business affordably and reach our incredible audience. Call, text, or email us anytime if you'd like more information on joining our team. The Varsity Sports Show will work hard to promote your business through our audio and video platforms while also promoting all of our young people. 480-779-9437 or email us at varsitysportshow.com. Everyone, my name is Rona Yusufi. I am from Afghanistan. I'm studying journalism, mass communication, and data science at Arizona State University. I am passionate about varsity sports and eager to contribute my enthusiasm and dedication to delivering engagement and insightful sports content through my show. I look forward to sharing the excitement of sports with the audience and showcase the incredible stories and achievements of athletes. Teams Out West brings NFL, NBA, MLB, and local sports talk to you Monday night starting at 7 on KDUS AM 1060 and the KDUS 1060 app. Welcome back to Varsity Sports Show, everyone, on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. This is Rona and Vince from a live um, from McClintock High School from Varsity Sports Show. So now uh, we're going to get one of our team members. His name is Doc Sento. Welcome, Doc Sento. How are you doing today? Good. I'm hey, doing good. Thank hey, you. Hey, Doug. How are you, man? Welcome. How's it going? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me, Vincent Rona. Uh, awesome. You still have your voice today. You spoke for like three hours nonstop the other night. Were you expecting that at the uh, Saguaro Showcase? I've got to say I was not quite expecting that. I was expecting <laughs> to talk a lot, maybe not that much. but <laughs> Yeah. So I've got a couple of questions for you as well as Rona. So we're going to kind of ping pong off you in this uh, brief amount of time where we, our audience is getting to know you as a new team member of Varsity Sports Show. Let's, uh, let's, first of all, let's talk a little bit about um, your, your, your background. How did, you get, uh, how did you build this passion, this love of sports journalism? I really, I've just loved sports from a young age. Um, I grew up watching football with my mom and dad and then uh, grew to love baseball a little bit later. Um, so I've just loved watching sports and playing sports my whole life and knew that I kind of like wanted to work in sports but knew that I didn't have the talent to make it a career of playing. So um, I figured the sports media path would be a fun way to stay involved in sports and do something that I loved. Sounds great. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Center, could you tell me uh, exactly what are you interested in this sports adversity show that you joined? Yeah, why us? <laughs> I guess is what she's asking. <laughs> I've, I've, heard, <laughs> I've heard a lot of good stuff about the varsity sports show, um, and I've, I've gotten a little bit of experience in writing and kind of brought, uh, behind the scenes like production, um, and I thought – thought Varsity would give me a really good um, opportunity to kind of grow in like being live and broadcasting because I get like nervous whenever I'm live talking and stuff. So yeah, like growing the comfortability with that um, and growing in that area so that I can be more comfortable and like confident on air. 
So let's talk a little bit about the other night. Now, we, uh, we presented the Saguaro Showcase, thanks to Saguaro High School Athletic Director Matt Harris, who's been a big fan of ours, and we are a big fan of him. He's given us a lot of opportunity to grow and, and to provide opportunities for our amazing team members. Um, he had a showcase event where a, a ton of over 50 colleges showed up to evaluate uh, student athletes from primarily from six schools you had and, and I'm going to try not to leave anybody out because I'm going off the top of my head here but Saguaro obviously the host school Horizon Mesa Mountain View uh, Desert Edge uh, Desert Mountain um, I know I'm leaving there somebody out who am I leaving out Doug? Valley, Christian. Valley, Christian, Valley Christian that's what the Trojans okay uh, coach Jake Peterson great guy um, and, and and they were there and we we ran it like a game broadcast we had a, a play-by-play broadcaster which was you Doug uh, in the box with our producer our main technical director uh, Sergio a, as well as Andrew running our main top camera and then we went down on the field we started the event the agreement was to start the event started at 4 30 we started our broadcast at 5 30 had a couple of bugs we were working out meanwhile and we were going to go until 7 30 we went until 8 15 doug <laughs> you spoke non-stop practically from 5 30 from when we went live all the way i had to beg sergio look sergio run some some commercials here so that you know doug can take a break take a breath uh, and he did uh, throughout and then we'd go down to the sideline it, for somebody that that supposedly has a little bit of anxiety with talking you did a good job of managing this thing you feel pretty good with it I felt I felt all right with it. Um, I it was lucky for me that it was football because football is the sport that I feel more most comfortable knowing and talking about. Yeah. Um, so it was easier to kind of get in the motion of doing that. But it was definitely nerve wracking the first half hour or so. But then I felt like I kind of kind of got comfortable with it more as we got into the night. <laughs> Yeah. So, and, and Doug, we are so excited to, to get more this summer from you. We're going to do a lot of work. You're going to co-host the show as well. Uh, so our audience is really going to get to know Doug Santos. So, Doug, I'm thrilled, privileged, honored that you're one of the eight joining us this summer. And uh, we look forward to all of the insightful reporting you'll be giving us. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Thank you so much. Doug Santo. Okay, Rona. Uh, when we come, uh, well, not when we come back from the break. We're not going to a break just yet. But who do we have joining us next from Texas Southern University? Another uh, a team member uh, that's presenting a report on the Houston Rockets. Who is that? Uh, his name is Thaddeus Mitchell. Yeah. He's going to talk about Houston Rockets news. Okay, so Thaddeus Mitchell from Texas Southern and a report on Houston Rockets. Take it away, Aaron. Hey everyone, I'm Thaddeus Mitchell reporting from Texas Southern University for the Varsity Sports Show. The Houston Rockets ended their season with an even 41 wins and 41 losses, landing them in 11th place in the Western Conference. As they look to the future, the Rockets hold the third lottery pick in the upcoming draft, a perfect opportunity that can shape their trajectory for years to come. The significance of this pick cannot be overlooked, considering the uncertainty of when the team might next have such an opportunity. The third pick in the draft has historically produced NBA stars such as Michael Jordan, James Harden, Luka Doncic, Carmelo Anthony, and Joel Embiid. Rockets have many opportunities. They could trade the pick for a proven player, leverage it for future picks, or select any good talent from this year's draft class. In the latest mock draft, UConn's Donovan Klingon and Kentucky's guards Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard are among the top prospects predicted to be strong fits for the Rockets. Donovan Klingon, who helped lead his team to an NCAA championship victory, is a physical presence at 7'2 with a reported 7 foot 7 inch wingspan, making him one of the largest players in the NBA draft pool. Rob Dillingham, a 6'3 guard, stands out for his exceptional ball handling skills and ability to create scoring opportunities for himself and his teammates. Meanwhile, Reed Shepard, also a 6'3 guard, brings dynamic shot-making versatility to the table with a shooting percentage of over 50% from beyond the arc this season. I'm Thaddeus Mitchell from Texas Southern University, and thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show. AM 1060 KDUS Arizona, Vince Delicio, Rona Yusufi from McClintock High School in Tempe. We are here for a broadcast. Uh, there's youth football championships going on today, and uh, we've got a lot of good stuff. We're, we're introducing our amazing audience 
to our amazing team members that are working with us this summer here with Varsity. So far, we've had uh, we've had Mark Berger from University of Wisconsin in Madison. Yes. We've had Riley Robertson from Cronkite. We just spoke with who do we just talk to? Uh, we got we talked with uh, Santo. Doug Santo. And also we talked with Mac Fam. Mac Fam from San Diego State. Doug Santo from uh, ASU. Uh, so and. It, we still have people to go uh, yeah. here in the show that we're going to be speaking with. Um, and also, uh, oh, let's talk about sports. This is a sports show. Rona, you grew up in Afghanistan loving what sport? Uh, usually, I, I really, one of, the one, uh, one of the sports that I really loved it so much was volleyball. Volleyball. Mm -hmm. Now, why wow, volleyball? That's interesting because a, a lot of teams overseas love soccer, you know, the other yeah. football. Uh, but why volleyball? So, uh, because it was easy for girls especially to play and just to jump and just do it uh, yeah. quickly and easily. But usually f soccer and football is quite difficult. Have you ever got, did you ever get hit in the face with a volleyball? Yes, I <laughs> <laughs> That's not an easy sport. That, that ball comes at you. You get spiked and, uh, and it leaves an imprint in, uh, on your head. Uh, so, but how many years did you play volleyball? Uh, usually around like six years. And I uh, also, I... One of one day that they just shoot threw the ball on my face and I was get dazed for two days. <laughs> wow, you were dazed for two days. You got your bell rung. Yeah. That's what they say when you get your bell rung. And now they call it a concussion, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, wow, six years. And uh, did you see a lot of? Did you play with a lot of great players growing up? Yeah, usually we got a lot of competition among schools. Uh -huh. So different types of schools we got. Uh, one of the schools was Syria, which I was Syria. there. Okay. Yeah, the next school was Rabe Balhi, which okay. was another school. We were having a lot of competition. Usually the any fights. No. <laughs> no fights? <laughs> no. Did the parents fight up in the, in the stands of the spectators? Did they uh, argue? Overall, the family did not come a lot, but some of them came. How, how were the coaches? How were the coaches treated? Were they well-respected, or did they take a lot of abuse? Actually, they're respecting a lot. and also they're, Interesting. They're also training us a lot that we have to be the winner. And that ah, competition, okay, yeah. so very intense training, and the, the coaches were well-respected. Yeah. It would be nice if we saw more of that here. <laughs> uh, so, uh, okay, very interesting. Well, that – so I'm, I'm so excited because we're going to learn more about your, your background, your country, and, and things going on overseas. How are things right now in Afghanistan, by the way? And uh, right now, unfortunately, the situation is really terrible because the government has been changed since yeah. 2021. Yeah. And or especially right now, women uh, like does not ha like women did not have uh, uh, just equal opportunity yeah. that men have. Yeah. And uh, women are not allowed to go to schools, universities. Really? Yeah, they're, like, wow. these schools and universities have been closed for women. Just only boys are allowed to go. That doesn't seem fair. Yeah, and then just they're joining, and then that's really actually not fair, and that's why they're, although we did not have a good system, education system in Afghanistan, but it's still they're closing it, yeah. which is really, you know, unfortunate. So we're going to learn more about that as the summer goes on, as well as things going on here in our community, here in Arizona. We're going to, we're, you are going to present a lot of reporting on, on women's issues here as well. Sure. So we're yeah, looking forward definitely. to it. Who's joining us next, by the way? So we're going to have um, Joe Mackey. Joe Mickey? Yeah, okay. Joe Mickey from uh -huh. Suaro High School baseball coach. Okay, just won a state championship this week. Congratulations. We'll be back with Coach Mickey here on the Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060. KDUS Arizona, go varsity. Hey listeners, Vince Delisio here from the Varsity Sports Show. We are so excited and honored that you start your weekends off with us. Our team is comprised of very talented high school and college students working toward a future in media. We appreciate your support and any opportunities that we can to promote your teams or businesses will go a long way toward helping us continue supporting our talented team. We are a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization and we use our platform to not only promote all of the great things happening in the world of sports locally and nationally, but also continue to promote and encourage future broadcasters as they grow in this industry. Please consider a tax-deductible donation to the Varsity Media Foundation. 
To find out more, please email us at info at varsitysportshow.com or check us out on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok at Varsity Sports Show or on Twitter at Varsity Show. Once again, thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now a nationally syndicated program on the Sports Map Radio Network. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show, where our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating an unmatched platform to showcase talent both in front of and behind the microphone in radio, television, podcast, and live streaming. The Varsity Sports Show, still your home for youth, high school, college, and you in Arizona and beyond. AM 1060 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. What is up everyone? My name is Mark Berger and I just finished my junior year where I am a journalism student at the journalism school at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I am very grateful for the opportunity at the Varsity Sports Show and with my sports knowledge and enthusiasm for the games, I will bring an energy to the show to give you all the best sports content. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe, with an experience so good it remains indescribable, with something for every seafood lover. Try one of their amazing custom seafood boils, sandwiches, appetizers, and salads. Angry Crab Shack Tempe is located east of I-10 on Warner Road, 480-674-3847. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. Come ready to eat. APAC is your one-stop source for all your automotive and heavy-duty air conditioning parts, supplies, and equipment. They're family-owned and have been the Valley's go-to for all your auto AC needs since 1982. Whether it's for your everyday or vintage car, commercial, or off-road vehicle or equipment, APAC has you covered. Call APAC, double A-P-A-K, the AC experts at 602-254-1116 and ask for the Varsity Special to get 10% off your purchase. Hey everyone, I'm Thaddeus Mitchell from Ball Springs, Texas, and I am a senior studying radio, television, and film in the Martin Luther King School of Communications at Texas Southern University. I am very excited to join the Varsity Sports Show this summer, and I will be giving you quality news on basketball, football, baseball, and all other sports. AM 1060 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. <laughs> This program is paid for by the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization, and its partners. You're listening to the Varsity Sports Show, home of Arizona's youth, high school, college sports, and you, empowering education and enabling dreams, right here on KDUS AM 1060 in Arizona. And now, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. The Varsity Sports Show presents the Sabercat Report with Saguaro High School baseball coach Joe Mickey. And now, here's the Sabercat Report. Welcome back, everyone. This is uh, sports, uh, Varsity Sports Show on Macklin Talk High School and... AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. So we got another person, one of our team member. His name is Nick Anderson from University. Actually, before we get to Nick Anderson, we have someone else joining us on the line. Perfect. Who is this? Uh, he's going to be Joe Mickey from Su Suaro High School baseball coach. Good morning, Coach Mickey. Thanks for joining us this morning. I, I, I'd like to ask you, I'm curious to know what you've been doing. It sounds like you haven't been doing a heck of a lot this spring, uh, and you, you need something to kind of get you back and get you going again. What, what, what's new oh, in your life? Uh, yeah, no, Vince, I, I, this is probably my favorite conversation we've had in the last four years. So I'm uh, 
Just drinking in uh, how exciting all this has been. Uh, really excited for the program. Uh, I haven't had a chance to truly like catch my breath, but uh, this is part of the fun of uh, capturing the glory of uh, the highest achievement of the mountain job. Coach, I told you that this would be a walk in the park, that it would be easy, that you would sweep the season, that you would win a state championship, and that you'd be re- you'd, you would allow me to renegotiate your next contract with, uh, with your athletic director, Matt Harris. L- let me get working on it. So uh, how easy? easy was it getting through this season uh you know i don't know i don't know if easy is the word i'd use i think uh i think just uh really excited that you set those expectations and were able to fulfill them it doesn't happen quite like that every year but uh i think we just missed one option and that was buying a couple lottery tickets <laughs> there you go uh rona's got a question for yeah. you go ahead rona okay um thank you so much so i'm gonna ask you another question which is uh what was your best memory that you have uh, from all the competition in Suara High School? Yeah, the, uh, the best memory, no question, is the most current one. Uh, I'll be honest with you, this group was a really hungry group, and uh, we came off a tough loss last year. They came in really committed to the practice plan that we had and wanted to go back to the work. and. Uh, the dog pile at the end of the year on the middle of the field is uh, one memory. You know, some of the hugs that I got from my seniors, uh, those are just things that you're going to hold on to for a lifetime. It goes with the trophy, but uh, just seeing their overwhelmment of uh, enjoying that moment uh, just makes my heart happy and probably hugging my wife, who I got to throw a shout out. It's her birthday today. So just that hug. She was a, she was a trooper this year and uh, just enjoying those moments with my family and my baseball family. Coach, I got to tell you, you know, for, for people that haven't been following the story, last year, obviously, you, you get yourselves in position. You make it to the state championship game, the 4A state final. You face a really, really good Canyon Del Oro team. You, you end up losing that game. They won the game. They won the championship. It was deja vu all over again. This year, you're back in position. You're facing in the state final that same team. And, I mean, you talk about... You know, getting a monkey off your back. I, when you walked into to, to the stadium and you saw them again, what was the nervous energy like? Uh, you know, it, it's a different energy this year, Vince. I'll be honest with you. This group was a different group than last year's group. They were a year, you know, you learn so much from failure in this life. I'll be honest with you. I think the fact that we had been there uh, and so close, I think really put us in a position of a different mindset this year. Last year, we were hoping to be successful in that last game. This year, we, we had a different confidence about us. Uh, and obviously, any time you're giving any of our pitchers the ball in that game, and Cam Nettie, the number one high school pitcher in the country, you have a different uh, different different excitement, different confidence. And, uh, you know, uh, Cade and Billy, I mean, we had five games and one bullpen inning in the postseason. Um, our guys just believed in what we had going this year, and, and uh, you felt that going into this game against a really good CDO team. They were there three straight years. And, uh, we knew it was going to have to go through them, and, and so we were ready for that task, and you, you felt that from our guys this year, a little bit different. And so I was excited for the opportunity. I was glad it was them because uh, they're a great club in Arizona, and uh, I was glad our guys were able to climb that mountain and uh, finish the revenge tour, if you will. Wow, that's great. So I'm going to ask you another question. Who is your most valuable player in your team? That's a good question. Uh, you know, I, that's a great question. Uh, I think hands down, I mean, and I wouldn't say hands down, but just based on statistics and this young, I mean, Cam Caminetti had so much eyes on him this year. Uh, he raised our level. Uh, he was the offensive and uh, he was the overall, I'm sorry, overall player of the year in 4A. Uh, he's up for Gatorade player of the year, which is more of a, a regional and, and national recognition. Uh, he had 119 strikeouts and, uh, 18 walks and it just the, the, the video game stats that our pitchers all put up uh, were just something to really truly relish in as a once in a lifetime kind of run through uh, our season and I would be hard pressed to not even throw a shout out to our administration who I think is an MVP oh uh, they don't need coach uh, come on coach they don't need they get enough credit as it is you throw them a little crumb from time to time it's they're going to start to expect it for God's sake <laughs> Uh, they, Coach, it's a, it's yeah, no, no, I know. I, great administration, <laughs> great principal. The athletic director is okay. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's a good group. Coach, I got to ask you, final question. We only have a few seconds on this one. But have you already, you know, kind of put your claim out there or gotten your list uh, to, to Cam over whether you want him to buy you a car or a house? And, and if so, how can I get in on that action? 
<laughs> you know what? Uh, I, I, I'm sure uh, it's amazing. He gets pulled on a lot. I, I, I tell you what, I just asked for uh, an autograph for my son on a baseball for his birthday, and that was uh, you should have seen the kids signing balls after the game. He was so generous with his time. Yeah. Uh, of all the kids who came out to support. It was really neat. Uh, and for all our guys, they were signing balls. It was just a, a unique experience that's truly what you do this job for is those types of milestone yeah. moments. And, uh, and these guys got a chance to experience that. It was really neat. Truly one of the good guys. I say this, Coach, and from the time I met you at that Saguaro boys basketball game three, four years ago and got to know you then to where you are now, you have not changed a bit, and you're going to continue to, to soar uh, just because you've held true to your values and your convictions and, and, and working with these young men and, uh, and young women in school. So thank you so much for allowing us access and for being the person that you are, Coach. You're, you're a great guy. Thank you. Well, thank, no, thank you both so much. Thank you, Vince. Uh, I was awesome that we got to so many documented moments for this year with your crew, and, and I'm uh, enjoying getting to rewatch some of them and just really grateful for these opportunities with you guys. Awesome. And, uh, so thank you, and have a great summer. You too, thank sir. You. All nice right, day. Coach Joe Mickey, Saguaro Sabercat baseball coach, now can add state champion to his resume. Yes. Uh, so anyway, uh, great guy. Um, okay, Rona, yeah. now. Who do we have joining us next? Uh, we're going to have another person, our team member. His name is Nick Andresen from University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Okay. Nick, are you there? I am here. How's it going? Awesome. Nick, welcome to the show. Welcome to the Varsity Sports Show uh, at, from UNLV. How does it feel to be uh, a, part of, uh, a part of something that's, that's pretty good? You know, it's pretty cool. You know, like you said, I'm the only UNLV student here, and... The Varsity Sports Show has, I have my coworkers here, are all from out of state. I know we have one that's in Florida, Texas mm -hmm. Southern, I believe. I know uh -huh. a lot of Arizona State. So I'm the only guy here in Vegas. It just feels pretty cool to be a part of something like this. Uh, and you're a Vegas native, so you can really speak to the culture of what's going on out there and, uh, and really do a lot of great things coverage-wise this summer. How's it been going so far? It's going well. Right now in Vegas, um, I know there's not a lot of sports going on right now. I know we've got a big um, game tonight. I think uh, women's Vegas national sports. football conference. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. The Las Vegas Silver Stars. Yeah, yeah. That's so, gonna be a big game for them. Yep. Besides them, um, I know football's in the off season right now. There might be some baseball going on right now. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. It's, it's so Nick, covering. perfect. So Nick, I have one more question. Uh, when did you join the University of Nevada, Las Vegas? And so, then how many in I mean, how many you know, semesters have you studied over there? Yeah, so, yeah, so this is my second year in second UNLV. Year I'm actually a, a four-year four student right now. Student so I started, started off at CSN, off CSN back in 2020, 2020, and then, and then I went there for went two there years, two and then and I then transferred I to the University of Nevada, Nevada Reno for a year just to get huh? out of town and just experience college life by myself. Biggest little city in America, yeah. Yep. Yep. And then yeah. uh, I moved back to Vegas for my senior year. And so I got one semester left in the fall, and then I'll graduate with a bachelor's. Awesome. So you're a JUCO guy. So the perspective of being a junior college transfer, plus you spent some time at Nevada, Reno. Um, did, does, does Reno 911 really exist? <laughs> I, I love that show. Yeah. yeah no. You know, probably I not. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So anyway, Nick, we're looking forward to you spending the summer with us. A lot of great reporting you're going to be doing for us. Uh, very well spoken, very detail oriented. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm going to get out there and we're going to do a remote broadcast sometime this summer as well. So looking forward to working with you, Nicholas Anderson, UNLV Greenspun School. Thank you to Dr. Dave Norris, the intern uh, coordinator out there who's uh, been very instrumental in uh, and working with us and allowing us access to the schools. It's going to be hard to top the group we had this spring, but I think, Nick, you're up to the challenge. Absolutely. I'm excited to get to work, Ben. Okay. Thanks again, Nick. So what a morning. Uh, Rona, you know, yes. we're out here at McClintock High School, youth football championships, uh, a lot of fun. Um, it, we're you, we're going to continue to talk about your background and how you ended up at ASU and what your goals are and what you ultimately want to do um, in focusing on 
uh, women's rights and talking a little bit of sports and in really polishing off those interview skills, which you're doing a great job and you're asking very insightful, very good questions, uh, getting a lot of good information, maybe even tapping some of those resources internationally and doing some interviews from people in other parts of the world. That'll be fun and interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I just joined ASU in 2020. Actually, it was 2022. So um, my first major was uh, biological science, mm -hmm. but then uh, for one semester. But then I changed my major to journalism mm -hmm. mass communication. Mm -hmm. Then after that, beside that, I add another major, which is data analyst. Uh, when we come back from the break, and I, I'm sorry to cut you off, Rona. When we come back from the break, more reporting. We'll be right back here on the Varsity Sports Show. Don't go anywhere, guys. Time in your afternoon for the Doug Gottlieb Show right here on KDUS AM 1060, 100.7 HD2, and KDUS1060.com. Weekdays from 1 to 3 p.m. APAC is your one stop source for all your automotive and heavy duty air conditioning parts, supplies, and equipment. They're family owned and have been the Valley's go to for all your auto AC needs since 1982. Whether it's for your everyday or vintage car, commercial, or off road vehicle or equipment, APAC has you covered. Call APAC, double A, P A K, the AC experts at 602 254 1116 and ask for the Varsity Special to get 10% off your purchase. Coaches, the Varsity Sports Show wants to be part of your team in 2023. We have a proven track record of providing the most coverage of your teams with Thursday and Friday night football. We will spotlight your players with multi-camera game broadcasts, pre- and post-game interviews, and segments on our Saturday morning radio show. With over 100 games broadcast in 2022, we will be exceptional for your team. Call, text, or email 480-220-4629 or info at varsitysportshow.com. Hello everyone, my name is Douglas Santo and I am a sports journalism major at the Cronkite School at ASU. I am extremely excited to work with the varsity sports team this summer and bring you upbeat and informative sports stories. With the MLB in full swing, the NBA and Stanley Cup playoffs in motion, the Olympics later this summer, and the WNBA underway in the Caitlin Clark era, this summer will be a blast. Listen to rewards for you with the KQS 1060 app. Download today to hear all of the national and local shows you love. That's the KTUS 1060 app. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. Vince and Rona live from McClintock High School where there are youth football championships going on all day today at this location as well as others. Uh, what an amazing morning. We'll be joined by league coordinator Dyron Tappan in the next 15 minutes. Um, but uh, I, I just want to, I want to express my, my gratitude, my thanks to, to our amazing team who've been jumping on throughout the morning, introducing themselves. We've got a lot of activity today in particular. Uh, we are introducing our new intern team that will be joining us through August until the fall. Uh, they're going to be joining us this summer. And uh, we're represented by six schools. We're not just some internship where there's a couple of people from one school. We have a lot of different ideas, blended ideas from different backgrounds, different schools, different parts of the country. We got the University of Wisconsin represented. We got Texas Southern University represented. We got Arizona State. We've got uh, San Diego State University represented. University of Florida, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. So a lot of great, amazing schools and amazing team members, eight in total joining us this summer, and one of which is, uh, is an international student that is, is here at ASU now, is sitting right next to me, Rona Yusufi. Rona, yeah. growing up in Afghanistan, you had mentioned a lot about women's rights and things, um, and the political climate being a little rough right now, obviously, and, exactly. and everything going on over there. Um, are you happy to be in the United States? Of course, I'm super happy. It w America, coming to America was one of my dreams, and finally I got it. And yeah. when I came to the United States, I really became 
super happy yeah. that finally I got here and I get my education. I'm free. I have a lot of rights as a woman. So um, I it really get super happy. Yeah. Yeah. The and, and you have family members still there. Your parents are still there in yeah. Afghanistan. Okay. Yeah. So uh, actually, they were in Afghanistan, but almost like two months ago, they traveled to Pakistan for a family reunification. Okay. So that I just filled out a family reunification form to bring them to the United States. Oh, okay. So there's a chance you'll be bringing your parents to the United States. Yes. Okay. And then you have you have f uh, four siblings. So there's five of you, correct? Sure. Yeah. Okay. And they're spread out all over different parts of the world in Europe. You've got a sister, you said, in Germany. Where yeah. are the others uh, located? Uh, the two of them are in Bangladesh. Bangladesh, They're studying okay. in University of Area, Asian University for Women. Okay. And, okay, so two of them are there. One of them is in Germany. Where are, where is the other one? There's a, there's a fourth one. That's yeah, uh, I mean, she is with my uh, dad. With your dad, with, with your family, parents. Yes. Okay, okay, very good. And so, all right, so you're, you're spread out, but it'll be, not, when was the last time you saw your family? It was uh, August 2021. Oh, it's been almost three years. It's more, it was a long time, yeah. yeah. So it was a long time ago that I just visited them. Um, that was the last chance that I visited them in Afghanistan. Then I left Afghanistan. Do you miss your family? Of course, it's kind very of a dumb much. question, but yeah. uh, anyway. Okay. All right. Uh, well, hopefully you'll get to see them soon. And by miracles of technology, they are listening to you right now. What's the time difference? How many hours ahead are they? Uh, yeah. In Afghanistan, we will have like almost right now, it's like 10, 19 in the, in the Arizona. But over there in Afghanistan, it's going to be 11 p.m. at night. Wow. It's a 13-hour time difference. Yes. Wow. Amazing. They're in the future. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. I got to ask them what happens to me in 13 hours. Uh, that's a joke. Uh, okay, all right. So joining us, we've got some more uh, sound bites from when we were out at Training Better Athletes last Saturday for, for the banner unveiling with Coach Ron Sowers and families. Aaron, take it away. I want you guys to repeat when I start the first word. You can. You can. There you go. On the bottom. Okay? Character, courage, and commitment. Character is what? Doing what you say you're going to do, when you say you're going to do it, how you say you're going to do it. Being the kind of man that you want to become now. Right? Start modeling those behaviors. Okay? Courage. Get back up when life wants you. All right, guys. We are at the uh, a very special event here at Training Better Athletes with Coach Ron Sowers, and we're joined with uh, one of the young men that uh, trained with Coach Sowers as well as has some close family. Uh, we're joined by Crush Sowers and his mom, Maria, and Uncle Chris. Uh, guys, thanks for joining us. I want to start off by asking this question. First, uh, Crush, tell me again, where did you go to high school? I went to Pinnacle High School in Pinnacle. Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, so you uh, started coming here to work with Coach Sowers how many years ago? About two years ago is when I started training with Coach Sowers. Why? Uh, I just wanted to work on my technique, make sure I could be the best offensive lineman I could be, and make sure I was just dominant on the field, and he also taught me very good morals. Well, yeah. he met Ron, I think it was at a camp, so talking to him and hearing from other um, athletes that this is where they were coming for training, we were just trusting that he was going to benefit Crush, and at that moment, whoever was willing to help him or make him a better offensive lineman, we were we were at least going to try it. I, I thought it was absolutely, you know, it was wonderful, you know. So um, I've seen Coach Sowers work with other individuals, and I've heard a lot of success stories. He's uh, coached a lot of guys. He's coached a lot of guys at Pinnacle. So I just thought this would be wonderful for Crush, and he works really hard. This is exactly what he needed, so... All right, guys, we are joined by the Shofs, Trey and his mom, Amy, out of uh, Millennium High School. Uh, first of all, Trey, this is a, a bit of a haul for you. We'll talk about the distance. How often do you come out to training better athletes? So I come out to TBA every Sunday, uh, usually at like 9 a.m., 10 a.m. So it's, a, uh, it's an easier drive in the morning than you'd think it would be, but still very much a haul. Okay, one word to describe Coach Ron Sowers. Go. Ooh, that's difficult. One word. First thing that comes to your mind. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> uh, Amy, mom, um, what what convinced you? Because there's a lot of camps out there. There's a lot of ways. There's there's a lot of ways to spend your hard-earned money. I mean, I could say, hey, you know, give me 
X amount of dollars and I'll turn your son into a superstar. What convinced you to send him to Coach Ron Sowers? We were very blessed with this because we did not pick up football till sophomore year. So he uh, is, we've always said you can't coach size, so we've, we were blessed that he's 6'5", but we were introduced to him from our coaches at Millennium and really just the rest came from there. I look around, and, and what impresses me the most is you have a tradition here with these banners and putting these names of these schools. So when these kids come in here and they see that, what, what does that tell them? That tells them that they're in a place where they're going to get the education that they need for their skill set, and it's a proven product. Um, this, this year alone, five banners went up um, with over 20-plus athletes on there who all sign offers to play in the next level. Um, to my knowledge, between O-line, D-line, running backs, linebackers, um, they're getting the looks that they need and want because they have the skill set when they go back to their schools. Okay, joined by a very special family. I've known Coach Major Perry now for, oh gosh, three, four years probably when you were coaching youth ball, uh, and, and you've got your son sitting here, which back then he was, uh, he was a little guy. He was, what, maybe 6'3", six, 6'4", six, back then, Coach. Now he's uh, about 6'8". Uh, and, and, Mom, thank you for joining us as well. Um, I, I want to ask this question. I'm going to start with the man in the middle here, yeah, receiving all the attention. Millennium High School, right? Uh, tell us about about how you ended up deciding with with your college decision, Mikhail, and and because you're a, a pretty big guy, probably drew a lot of attention, and uh, and and what made you uh, opt for the decision that you made? Tell us about the recruiting process. Well, um, this recruiting process was really, was really fun for me, and also really stressful. But the thing with Rocky is. The coaches really, really cared about me and my well-being, especially like because they're, they're the only staff that kind of asked like when my birthday was. Really? Not, yeah, uh, no other coaching staff has done that. So they didn't. So they wanted to get to know you. Right. Okay. Um, Mom, the the fear of him going away from home. He is going out to Montana, and that was that's really scary for me. But again, I, I think he hit the nail on the head with the fact that they really do care about him. Um, you know, he's going to be turning 18 on somebody's campus, and his first day of school is going to be the 19th. And so I thought it was really important that we sat down and and he asked him, you know, what is it? You know, head coach, he said, what is it that you want for dinner on your birthday? And that just meant a lot because I feel like I'm sending my son somewhere where people are actually going to look out for him and care about him. Him more than just what he can do on the field. They care about his development as a person. So that was important. All right, welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show. AM 1060, KDUS, Arizona, live from McClintock High School, Rona and Vince for the Youth Football Championships. And we are joined on the line by Thaddeus Mitchell. Uh, Rona, who is that? Uh, he is the person from Texas Southern University. And he's going to be live with us. Okay, so welcome, Thaddeus Mitchell. Uh, welcome to our program. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good, thank you. So uh, I have uh, just a couple of questions. Um, could you tell me, please, when did you join uh, this uh, Texas Southern University? Okay, yeah, I joined yeah. Texas Southern University in... 2022 after I graduated from Tyler Junior College with my associate's degree in radio TV broadcast. Garrett, thank you so much. Yeah, so a, a junior college transfer, Rona, which means that he's a little bit more mature than the average student because you earned an AA, so you've already graduated. You got your associate's degree. Now you're working on completing your bachelor's degree. Uh, and, and you're somewhat of a local guy. I mean, you're from the state of Texas, which is obviously a very large state. You're from the Dallas area. But uh, of all the choices that you have, and I think we talked about this the other night, what drew you to Texas Southern in Houston? Because that is a little bit of a haul from Dallas. I mean, it's not you're not going across country, but, but there's other schools you could have selected. Yeah, uh, Texas Southern University has a lot of great culture here. Uh, my mom also wanted me to go to HBCU. Uh, she didn't have the chance to go to one, so she thought it would be a great opportunity for me. So, 
Awesome. Yeah, a lot of good opportunities. And we're looking forward. You're a big basketball fan, uh, presenting the perspective of, uh, of, first of all, a couple of things, of being at an HBCU this summer as well as uh, being in the state of Texas. You're going to present a different spin on things, and I'm excited. I am so thrilled and, and grateful. We have a nice relationship with your intern coordinator there, Dr. Clyde uh, Duncan, Jr., and um, – uh, and, and so it's, it's been a, a great relationship, and he's uh, been, been a real champion for our cause in, in helping to, to spread the word and, and getting us top-notch students. So no pressure, Thad, but you're, you're coming in the line of a lot of great students, and, uh, and so we expect the bar to be raised even more this summer. Are you up to the challenge? Yes, sir. I'm ready for it. Okay, here we go. All right, so that being said, Thad Mitchell from Texas Southern University, joining the Varsity Sports Show this summer. Thad, thank you so much for joining us and looking forward to hearing more as the weeks go on, including you'll, you'll be co-hosting the show periodically on Saturday. So thanks again. Thank you. Yes, sir. No problem. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay. So when we come back from the break, Rona, who's going to be joining us? We're going to have Dyron Toppin. Yeah, in person. He's so going to be in person. He's yeah. the coordinator of all the activities out here today. So we'll be hearing from Dyron. He's going to talk a little bit about this uh, youth sports organization that he's formed with other parents and all the opportunities presented uh, here on the Varsity Sports Show. So don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back. Go Varsity. Downloaded the KTUS 1060 app yet? Download today and get all of your favorite local and national shows right on your phone. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. With an experience so good it remains indescribable. With something for every seafood lover. Try one of their amazing custom seafood boils, sandwiches, appetizers, and salads. Angry Crab Shack Tempe is located east of I-10 on Warner Road. 480-674-3847. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. Come ready to eat. Hi, this is former NBA All-Star and coach Doug Collins, and you're listening to the home of youth, high school, college, and you, the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. Hello everyone, my name is Mac Pham. I'm a student at San Diego State University, majoring in journalism with a minor in communications. I'm excited to contribute to the Varsity Sports Show this summer. I'm looking forward to telling the story of a game through an X's and O's perspective. I'll turn those picks into gold. Wall-to-wall -wall NFL coverage and the biggest stories coming to you from 3 to 5 p.m. The Rich Eisen Show here on KDUS AM 1060 and KDUS1060.com. Welcome back, everyone. To Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060, AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. So we got uh, one of the coach. Uh, he it's gonna be in person. So we have Dyron Tappen. Welcome, Dyron Tappen. How are you today? And how was your day going with your team? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's been a great day so far. We had our first championship game. Uh, for the 10 and under group, the second game kicked off just now for 7 under. And uh, the first one came down to uh, last play of the game, one second. It was a really exciting finish. Both of the teams fought hard, and uh, Stampede ended up winning over the O'Connor Junior Eagles. Mm, sounds great. So uh, could you tell me how you're organizing your team and, like, usually how do, uh, like, how do you organize and how many teams you got in your, like, in, in this school? Great. So um, the entire league-wide this spring, we started with around 120 teams. We had uh, 114 of them made it all the way through to these playoffs uh, here that we held. And the spring is a bit of the, an off-season technically for football, right? People think of football as a fall sport. So um, of those, you know, 100-plus teams, uh, we're down to the 16, you know, games today, last 32 teams playing in the championships. In the fall, in our regular season, we'll have over – 
200 plus teams. Um, we've heard from over 220 teams all over the valley and as far as south as Maricopa, north to Flagstaff, Prescott Valley, places like that. Uh, plenty of teams both west and east valley. So there's a lot of great opportunities for youngsters to find you know, a good tackle football program in their area. And our job is to support all of those teams by giving them the infrastructure for good games, good standings, good matchups, and then at outstanding fields like this one we have out here at McClintock High School. Wow, that's great. So could you tell me from which ages do you have like in your team? Is it from seven to eight or eight, seven to 10? Yeah, that's a good question. So these kids are as young as uh, six and under. Okay. And they go all the way up through 14 and under or eighth grade. So it's a, it's a youth focus, right? So mm -hmm. the idea is that we're developing these young athletes to get ready for the high school game. Mm -hmm. And so um, some of them start, like I said, as, as young as six. And, um, again, there's some great coaches out here. We have an outstanding partnership with USA Football. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of resources for coaches, especially those that may be coming from flag or a lot of the coaches they played as a kid and now their son or nephew or somebody's coming through and they're looking to coach. So we supply them with a lot of coaching resources so they can learn the new, safer skills of the game. They can learn blocking and tackling, the, the kind of the, the right way that we do it now, using all the things that we learned over the years. So uh, USA football powers a lot of that. We've got a lot of great coaches. Uh, many of them also coach at the high school level, uh, and they come down and do this, or they're retired from high school and so forth. So it's, um, it's a really exciting time to be in Arizona for football because it's really growing. Mm, that's great. Could you tell me about the how many hours are you spending for training there? I mean, these kids uh, that then usually like total like between six to eight hours mm -hmm. in a week. Yeah, so that, that's really, so our teams are all independent clubs. So really their practice schedule depends on them. I would say on average it's two to three practices a week for these kids. But I think what parents would be surprised is how well coached and how deeply a lot of these organizations are. And again, being that they're independent clubs, parents can shop around for the right fit for them. You know, many it's uh, just finding the easiest way to get to practice or the one that's closest to their local high school. But there are programs, I would say they're probably on the field two or three nights a week. They do some film study, uh, things like that as well, just like the high school kids do. And so um, you know, these kids have been preparing, you know, it is kind of year round, but this season really starts in earnest with February practices. We kick off in, in March. Um, navigate our way around spring break and Easter. And we always culminate until the, this weekend here just before we get to Memorial Day. Mm, that's great. So could you tell me about who is your most valuable player in your team? Well, I'm, I'm not coaching any teams myself personally, and I think each of these teams all, all have their own you know, MVPs. Uh, one thing that's awesome for me today is a bunch of my old players came out to support me. So these guys were out here playing the youth game when they were you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, mm -hmm. uh, winning the state championship in 2017 and 18, but now they're graduating seniors from high school. D you're talking about the guys that look like they want to beat you up back here, or that the guys <laughs> that you've coached no, in that, the past? That, that's my muscle, Vince. Oh, okay. In, in Sorry, I had to chime in because these guys look like they want to, you know, want to jump you or that's something. That's it. So, yeah, yeah okay. I'm, I'm excited to have them out here. It really it means a lot. Wow, that's good. So, so usually for, uh, for your own children, like, how many children do you have, and how do you encourage them? You got one that's a handful. Yeah. <laughs> you got one. He has one son, right? Yeah, we already yeah. sent him out of here. We <laughs> got him out of the way. Yeah, so for, you know, you know, for my, my son started playing when he was in the second grade. Um, I think that parents uh, probably, you know, again, I know it's tough because you want to expose your kids to multiple sports. It's yes. hard doing them all at the same time. You're right. Um, and ev but every sport is also year round. So there's yeah. the opportunity to, to do too much. So. Um, you know, if I, my advice to parents is, is that, I, you know, do the multiple sport thing, pick one season at a time, uh, really commit to it. Because it's really hard to do two sports in season at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, work with your coaches and, again, kind of finding that right team. And, you know, with my experience coaching at, at the youth and the high school level, I would say it's at least by the sixth grade you want to get kids into, into youth tackle. If they're, if they're busy with other sports, I understand. But like I said, we've got kids much younger than that coming out. But I really think that, the, if they've got two or three good years, and even, like I said, we offer the spring as well as the fall season, that gives an opportunity for those kids to catch up before they enter the high school level. Mm, that's good. So uh, could you tell me about the tactic that uh, Macklin Talk High School is using? So what type of tactic are this school is using when they're training their uh, their kids, uh, I mean, especially when the coaches are training their the kids? Sure. So here at the high school program, it's, it's – um, 
I'm glad you mentioned it because one of the coaches that, that's here at McClintock also helps out with one of the youth programs later on today. So really that's what a lot, and, and quite often people use the term feeder, right? So they have a, a youth football team that's preparing them to become the high school player and the high school coaches help it out. And that integration between the high school and the youth level is very important. Yeah. So I think if there's any tactic, it's that. And it's really the familiarity and not necessarily making sure that these kids that are in middle school are trying to learn a, a massive playbook or anything like that, but that they get used to the routine, the routine of training in the off season, of taking care of their bodies, getting ready to uh, put all of those things together. And then certainly there's the football aspect to it as well, right? But mm-hmm. I think that it's the the rigor and understanding of uh, you know what it takes to have practice, but then also take care of things in the classroom as well. You and I spoke offline, uh, Dyron, a while back about the schedule. And sometimes, you know, a typical thing from a parent will be, well, I don't have time to run my kid around for games on Saturday. But the, there's going to be games probably on other days, right? Yeah, so that's one of the things that now that, you know, there's, there are so many games. And then I think it's, it's also important to mention that in not just football, but in all sports, we have a shortage of officials as well. So we can own, there's only so many officials that we can book. So now we're going to uh, we're looking at expanding into other days. We want to understand from our teams what the buy-ins for that is, playing potentially on Sundays or even Monday evenings because a lot of Arizona high schools practice in the morning, leaving their field open then. So we're going to come up with some ideas for the fall so there might be more than just Saturdays alone. But to your point about you know busy parents and so forth, I think what any football parent will tell you is that once their team comes together, there's definitely a, a family atmosphere to it. It's going to be at some point, sometime, everyone's going to need a lending hand. You know, we talk about how it, it takes a village and that football family. It's, it's all too common for one parent to be the one that's picking up, dropping off, splitting rides with other people, and they really kind of come together for that. So, you know, I wouldn't, you know, both my parents, you know, I were working when I was a kid, and so... You know, I got kids telling me, you know, I would, I would hear them say, oh, I can't get to practice. I'm like, well, when I was your age, I took a BMX bike or a city bus. And I don't think, you know, you guys are all waiting for, you know, mom or dad to come take you. Yeah. Work together. Let's do it. We do what you can to get yourself out there because, you know, your best ability is availability. So get yourself to practice. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Dyron Tappen, the uh, lead coordinator here. Uh, Dyron, thanks so much. It uh, looks like a, an amazing day, successful day. A lot of families engaged, a lot of activities. It's, it's a kind of warm day, so hydrate. But congratulations on picking up and, and really taking the ball and running with it with this league. No, I appreciate it. You know, Arizona Youth Football is on the rise. We're glad to be a part of it. We're glad to be that, that platform and the place for everybody to plug in and get these games going. There you go. Yeah. There you ha- have it. Hopefully we'll get an opportunity. We'll cover you guys in the fall, too. So yes. thanks again for, uh, we'll for allowing us out. Okay. Thank you so Dyer much. Dyron Thank you. All right. Okay, there you have it. Rona, nice job on that interview. And we're going to continue on with some uh, sure. amazing reporting from our amazing team. Take it away, Aaron. This is Riley Robertson from Arizona State reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. The Stanley Cup playoffs are well underway in the NHL, and there have been a lot of notable moments. We are now in the thick of the second round of four, with eight teams left. Each round of the playoffs are a best-of-seven series similar to the NBA playoffs. We have the Dallas Stars playing the Colorado Avalanche, the New York Rangers taking on the Carolina Hurricanes, the Battle of Canada with the Edmonton Oilers against the Vancouver Canucks, and the Boston Bruins versus the Florida Panthers. In contrast to round one, there were no sweeps throughout these second round matchups. Each matchup has gone to at least six games, which is a testament to just how strong these remaining eight teams are. One notable story out of the first round was the reigning Stanley Cup champions, the Vegas Golden Knights, being knocked out of the playoffs by the Dallas Stars. Looking ahead, we have the completion of the second round and the start of both the Western and Eastern Conference Finals. Each of the teams that are left are incredibly strong and have all been putting up good fights. It is going to be an interesting end to the Stanley Cup playoffs this year, and I'm sure we have some great hockey ahead of us. In other hockey news, we have the 2024 NHL entry draft happening at the end of June. This draft will showcase the best young talents in the world of hockey, and this is where they will all be able to start their journey. The San Jose Sharks will have the first pick of the draft, and they are projected to select the standout Canadian forward Macklin Celebrini. As we get closer to the draft, we will start to see projected picks, and it will be interesting to see how everything shakes out. This is Riley Robertson for the Varsity Sports Show, and you are listening to KDUS 1060 Radio. Good morning. This is Douglas Santo from ASU reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. The ASU men's golf team competed in its regional tournament this week, May 13th through the 15th. The Sun Devils competed as the number one seed after winning the Pac-12 tournament in April. However, the regional tournament did not go as planned for ASU. ASU shot 6 over 286 on Monday and sat in 7th place, within 9 shots of the leader, North Florida. 
On day two, the Sun Devils improved by a stroke and shot five over 285. They remained in seventh place, but gained a stroke on the leader. The regional tournament is a 15-team field, and the top five teams advanced to the NCAA championships in late May. The Sun Devils went into day three eight strokes back of the leader and three strokes back of fifth place. ASU improved by a stroke once again on Wednesday and shot four over 284, but strong performances by four of the top five teams held the Sun Devils out of the top five. ASU finished in sixth place, five strokes behind fifth place North Florida, who fell four spots on day three. This is the first season under head coach Matt Thurman. The Sun Devils will miss the NCAA championships, but don't let that take away from the success of ASU this year. ASU advanced to the NCAA championships in nine of the last 10 seasons and seven straight before this year since Thurman took over in 2016. The Sun Devils have won the last two regional tournaments and had their best NCAA finishes since 1996. Despite ASU not advancing from the regional tournament this season, the Sun Devils won the Pac-12 tournament, which had not been done under Coach Thurman. In addition, four of the five players who competed at regionals can return to ASU, and two of those four competed at the championships the last two years. It's safe to say ASU will be able to run it back next season and likely make another run for the NCAA championships. This is Douglas Santo from ASU for the Varsity Sports Show, and you are listening to KDUS AM 1060 Radio. Check out the Doug Gottlieb Show, Monday through Friday, 1 to 3 p.m., right here on KDUS AM 1060. Hi, y'all. My name is Riley Robertson, and I am originally from Dallas, Texas. I'm currently attending Arizona State University, majoring in both sports journalism and sports business. I'm so incredibly excited to start this semester with the Varsity Sports Show. There are a plethora of sporting events to cover this summer, such as the Stanley Cup playoffs, the College World Series, and the Summer Olympics. With all of these events, the summer is definitely going to be a fun one. Hi, this is Saguaro High School head baseball coach Joe Mickey, and you are listening to the home of the Sabercat Report, the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. Go Cats! The Varsity Sports Show live with Vince D'Alessio every Saturday morning from 9 to 11 a.m. Features all the local youth, high school, college sports, and more, both around the valley and beyond. Enjoy go-to segments with coaches and players from around the valley. Tune in to the Varsity Sports Show with Vince and Guest, Saturday morning from 9 to 11 a.m. Right here on KTUS AM 1060. Online at KTUS1060.com and the KTUS 1060 app. Bringing you the latest sports topics weekly right here on KTUS AM 1060 with me, the Doug Gottlieb Show, 1 to 3 p.m. Recently in the NBA, Minnesota Timberwolves center Rudy Gobert earned the Defensive Player of the Year. This is Gobert's fourth Defensive Player of the Year award. He joins the elite group of Dikime, Mutombo, and Ben Wallace as the only players in history to have won the award four times in their careers. Gobert averaged a double-double of 14 points and 13 rebounds. He's also an incredible shot blocker, averaging two blocks per game to lead the Wolves that had the number one ranked defense and also held opponents to the lowest field goal percentage in the regular season. The future Hall of Famer has a large presence at the rim as opposing players are constantly passing up shots the moment they enter the paint and see the seven foot Frenchman right there at the rim. As he sits on the backside for the defense, Gobert is excellent at covering for his teammates when they get beat on the perimeter. Gobert is an outstanding player for the Minnesota Timberwolves and his collection of the four defensive players of the year awards he has racked up, they speak for themselves. 
Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show here on AM 1060, KDUS Arizona, Vince Delisio and Rona Yusufi. Am I pronouncing your last name right? I get yeah, very yeah, self-conscious. Yeah, correct. Am I correct? Okay, yeah. good. I'm glad. Rona, our newest team member, one of eight this summer. Uh, she is studying. Um, she is studying journalism at uh, Cronkite School of Mass Communications. Not a sports journalist, but we are throwing you in headfirst to covering sports because it's good for you. Sport brings people together. It's a relatable topic, but you're also going to cover other things for us. We're going to talk about that as the show goes on uh, here at the, in the waning moments at the end of the show uh, in, in just a few minutes because we really want to let people know who you are, what you're doing, and why it's important to listen throughout the summer because we're not just – a sports show. We are storytellers. You're a storyteller, and you're telling stories uh, and, and putting voices to people that don't really have a lot of voices. And, and so you're going to be doing a lot of amazing this, things this summer. There's a lot of pressure that's on you. We're going to talk more about that here in the, in the closing minutes. Um, so far, we've, we've featured a lot this, this morning. We've heard from each of our team members. Um, all of them have been on with us uh, throughout the morning. All seven of your peers, Rona, have been yes. on with us throughout the morning, spending time talking about their background, how they ended up studying journalism at their respective schools. And once again, we have Guys, if you're a faculty member, an administrator, even a parent, if, if there's kids out there that are students that, that have a knack for this industry or that are interested in working in media, in journalism, get in touch with us. Um, we likely have an opportunity for them, and we do a lot of work. Now, we're full for the summer, but uh, we're going to uh, transition into the fall and, and really be bringing a lot of great stuff uh, and a lot of good programming and getting into some different things. We are so excited about the fall. I'm excited about the summer because the eight of you represent six schools. We have, again, ASU. We have um, UNLV, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. We have mm -hmm. San Diego State University. We have University of Wisconsin in Madison. We've got University of Florida. We've got Texas Southern University. We've got six schools for eight of our team members that are joining us this summer. It's a lot of exciting stuff. What I like about it is when we had our first meeting the other night, we had ideas that we're engaging. Uh, we're meeting every Sunday night virtually and from all parts of the country. I feel bad for Robert because he's in Florida, and we meet at 8 o'clock local time. It's 11 p.m. there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he was up, and, and we were talking and engaging. had a good, nice blend mix of ideas. We put, we're all on a text string. Uh, we're all engaging, and we're talking to each other about different things and helping each other and really brainstorming ideas. So uh, you'll learn more about our team throughout the summer. It's going to be a lot of fun. Guys, if you don't have a lot going on, even if you do, Make us a part of, of your Saturday uh, because I think you're going to really enjoy some of the reporting. Um, it's, not just some, it's not just some old guy that's sitting here pontificating on how great he is for two hours every Saturday. That's <laughs> not us. We, we are a big blend of, uh, of ideas and, and things. Not to say that people are doing that on the other stations. Don't call and complain that I'm bashing other, other shows. But uh, – that being said, uh, we're going to be engaging and, and interacting with a lot of different ideas from a lot of different people. Yeah. Um, coming up next, we have a report from our very own Nicholas Anderson. Nick is from the UNLV, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. He's going to be talking a little bit of 2024 NBA draft lottery recap. Uh, and then we're going to have some final thoughts on the show. So, Aaron, let's take it to Nick. Good morning. This is Nicholas Anderson from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, reporting for the Varsity Sports Show. The 2024 NBA Draft Lottery concluded last weekend with Atlanta striking gold, landing the first overall pick in this year's draft. The Hawks entered the draft with a 3% chance to win the lottery. The last team to enter the draft with that low of odds and win was in 2014 when the Cleveland Cavaliers had a 1.7% chance to win the lottery. With the Hawks on the clock, the number one overall pick is still up in the air with French center Alexandre Saar coming out as the favorite to be selected number one. Donovan Klingon arises as a favorite to be drafted as a lottery pick. The seven-foot rim-protecting center with elite post moves shows everyone that he has the potential to be a sensational player after winning a national championship while playing his college basketball at UConn. Zachary Rinchaser, a forward out of France, is another international prospect favored to go high in this year's draft. 
other draft prospects like NCAA national champion runner-up and 2024 men's college basketball player of the year, Zach Eady, has potential to make an impact in this year's draft. Bronny James, son of NBA legend LeBron James, could be the biggest story in this year's draft with the potential of getting drafted and playing alongside his father. LeBron could have some influence with his son getting drafted this season and becoming the first father-son duo to play together in the NBA. Nikola Topic and Reed Shepard, two talented guards, kept off this year's mock drafts as the two most talented guards to be selected in this year's draft. The NBA draft kicks off on June 23rd, where these young prospering players could turn dreams into reality and battle for their spot to become the next star in the NBA. This is Nicholas Anderson from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and you are listening to KDUSA AM 1060 Radio. Time for Vince's final word. Yeah, there you have it, guys. Another show in the books. Wow. You know, I feel like we... I feel like we've already been through the summer with everything that uh, we've had over the past few weeks, the the past week. Uh, (laughs) Excuse me. My, uh, our our producer, Aaron Decker, reminded me of something that was on our programming grid that I I should have taken off, and I'll I'll take take acknowledgement, kind of take a minute to talk about it right now. Um, About a month ago, uh, and and I apologize if some of you have just heard this so much, um, we lost somebody very close, near and dear to us, to our, our family and to our show, Mike Beal. He's a guy I grew up with, and, uh, and we, did some, we had some activities over the past week uh, for him uh, to honor him and his contributions. Um, we've been doing this show now for five years. This is our fifth year. We started in 2019 under a different name, a different, mm-hmm. slightly different format. We went about a year and a half under that previous format, um, and we were on. Saturday mornings from 7 to 8 o'clock in the morning, which really gave us an opportunity to test our format because we knew it wasn't going to be a very big audience. Who's up at 7 a.m. on Saturday? Very rarely uh, a lot of people. But we, we started to build an out-of-state audience because of different time zones, uh, and, and we kind of tested our format a little bit, and things changed about a year and a half in um, and, and, and to where I had some extra airtime, and I called my friend Mike up, and who's been a 40-year you know, lifetime friend of mine since our freshman year in high school, and we and he lives in Southern California. And we talked about a, a surf report uh, that he wanted to do, and it blossomed into what was our most popular segment. We had guests that we would book that would say they would only come on if they had a chance to be on during his segment because it was such a fun, engaging, you know, laugh out loud, LOL, literally uh, segment that, that uh, would, would start off as innocent enough as a, a report on what's going on at the beach, you know, with the surf and the environment, to him ripping me for five minutes uh, and, and insulting me and, you know, old high school stuff and humor. And, and the, the guests that would be on with him were, were so just loved it. They had a blast with it because it was so different than anything that you typically find on sports radio, for that matter, that Mike became a bit of a, um, a cultural icon and, uh, because people thought he was an actor, that he was fake. And he wasn't. He was as real as it gets, and we had a lot of fun with it. Anyway, uh, that was Mike. And, and we did a show for him on Wednesday night to acknowledge him, and we ran some past segments as well as some tributes, so it was a lot of fun. Uh, and now we are moving on um, with the world and with, uh, with our show and with our day-to-day. Um, but we'll never forget the past, but we'll continue to forge ahead into the future. And I'm sitting here with one of our amazing team members, Rona Yusufi. Rona you have in our final minutes now you've got some things you want to work on this summer yes uh, and what are they so the program that i just try to um made it like and i just want to work on women's right uh in afghanistan and also in other uh country that uh like uh, they have and mm-hmm. also i'm gonna work on a women's one of the women project which is gonna be um wanna go and s- uh, make a report of the women's situation in rural area in the united one states minute. especially in arizona in arizona yeah yeah and also um i'm trying my best to interview some people from mm-hmm. afghanistan that how is their situation in afghanistan right now and what are the challenges that they have uh, in afghanistan Wonderful, and we can't wait. It's going to be an exciting summer, a lot of work. You're going to be very busy, and it's going to be a lot of fun, and we can't wait to hear what you come up with. Guys, please be sure and check out all of our archive content on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Varsity Show. Thanks to our producer, Aaron Decker, in studio. Join us next Saturday here on AM 1060 K.
KDUS Arizona, 9 to 11 a.m. Our Houston show is tomorrow on ESPN 97.5, 9 to 10 a.m. Central Time. Thanks again for joining us here on the Varsity Sports Show. Vince Delisio and Rona Yusufi, out. Go Varsity. Thank you, guys. Have a nice day, guys. Bye. <laughs>